Hey everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing. Today we're going to be taking a close look at the Brother BQ 3100 sewing and quilting machine. So the Brother BQ 3100 uh, was released late in 2021 to replace its predecessor, the VQ 3000. And um, a lot of similarities, as anyone who owns one of the Brother V series machines would know, uh, they're fantastic machines and just amongst the most reliable and feature rich products on the market. So the BQ 3100 just continues that, that great reputation. So what we're gonna do first is run through some of the key features on the machine and just to give you a good idea of, of um, why and, and who would probably be interested in a machine like this. The first thing I have to say though is um, I'm a big believer in having a machine that you're just comfortable in, in sitting in front of, a machine that looks good and you feel really comfortable in front of because honestly if you don't you tend to not want to sit in front of your sewing machine and um, that's a shame so you really want to enjoy the, the experience. I think the BQ3100 that carries on that same tradition of the V-series machines, it, uh, it just looks sensational. It's a big machine too, so you've got 11 and a quarter inches from needle to arm space, so of course if you're a quilter that's important. But even if you're just a really serious sewer, dressmaker or crafter, having that extra space in the arm is... It just opens up a whole world of extra opportunity for you. So massive space there, and it's quite tall as well. It's a bit taller than a lot of machines. So if you're if you're uh, a quilter and you like to, to work on, on larger quilts, you've got ample space in the arm there to, um, to feed even up to queen size quilts through there. So as I said, nice looking machine, very spacious. Um, it's a clean looking machine. You really do feel comfortable. And one of the key things I love about Brother Machines is the buttons are always big and accessible. There's nothing worse than having to look at the buttons on a machine and going, hey, is that the right one? I don't know. But you can see clearly the button sizes here. Everything is very accessible and um, it just has that great sort of let me at it feel. And of course, you'll see here you've got a seven inch touch screen. I haven't touched it yet. It's still got its, um, its uh, little screen saver going there. So we're gonna get to that in a minute. And as we look at other aspects of the, the physicality of the machine, the, the top obviously just pops back like so. Now, what I like about this is you can access the thread without having to reach over and behind the machine. So that's kind of really handy. Bobbin winding is at your fingertips here, so you can easily get to your bobbin winding. All the illustrations on top of the machine to show you how to wind your bobbin. And we're gonna wind one of those in a minute, so I'll get to that. Very easy threading path. Wait till you see the needle threading on this. Absolutely sensational. And um, all in all, just really simple and easy to follow. It, uh, it also comes in the box with this model, the, um, the twin needle spool holder. So this, uh, this is standard in the machine. Now what that means is the big spools of thread you can use or metallic threads that sometimes would prefer to be delivered the correct way. And it's really easy to put on. So all you need to do is this, this top just simply pops straight out and you can pop that over there and the thread stand then just sits directly in there like so. And now you've got a really, really cool twin needle thread stand. Now I'm not gonna use that for now because I, I don't need to. Take that back off. Pop my cover back on. I do like having my cover on when I'm showing the machine off. So um, again, that, that's it physically. It also, by the way, you'll notice there's a little uh, hole down here on the machine. It does come standard with the knee lever. So if you are a, a bit more traditional in the way you like to run your machine, that knee lever is for lifting the presser foot and that plugs into the, the little hole there. I'm not gonna worry about it for the moment. Don't need to use it. Um, I will, however, point out, again, a couple of the extra features that come standard with the machine. It does come with this amazing wide extension table. So I don't know if camera guys got all that in screen. It's so big, it's taking up the whole screen. But that simply pops on here. We take that off and then pop the table on there. And you've got a lovely big wide, huge wide extension table. And that's a real must for quilters. So um, real benefit there, it is big. And it's really solid and sturdy too. You're not gonna break it or damage it. And that comes with the product. So it's not an optional extra, you get it with it. 
Um, so that's the, the physicality of the machine. That's kind of it. Uh, we're going to go into some of the features now and the key benefits of, of having a machine like this. So let's take a closer look. A big part of any machine purchase is what comes in the box. I've already mentioned we've got the wide table, we've got the knee lever. Uh, this machine has some really exclusive features that you won't find on any other brand of product. One of them is it has what they call the ultrasonic pen. And um, I'm going to demonstrate this in a little while, but this is standard in the box as well. And we use that for getting needle placement and lining up um, your stitching lines. And, and it works well with the laser guidance system built in to this machine, which is just incredible. So that's standard in the box and it has a little cradle that sits there. Another feature it has that is awesome is the Move It dual or digital dual foot. And uh, this kind of makes a walking foot almost redundant in the way it operates. So we're gonna dig into that in a little while. But um, this actually has its own motor right in here which drives this little kind of tractor wheel here. And it gives you that, that upper feed as well as your lower feed. So uh, incredible start, it's standard in the box as I said. It does come with a host of feet too, so um, you're really left wanting for nothing. So this little platform here, I don't know if camera guys got that in shot, but all the different feet are in here and you've got your standard um, straight stitch foot your, or your, your zig, Z foot, your zigzag foot, you've got your applique feet, you've got overlocking, you've got zippers, you've got button sewing, you've got um, uh, blind hemming feet. It, and it is a quilting machine, remember, so standard in the box is the echo quilt foot, the standard quilt foot, the um, open toe quilt foot, a quarter inch piecing foot, and uh, it also comes with a host of other feet for the move it, uh, the, the move it dual foot. So I'm gonna show you that a little later, but really it's, it's well featured. It also comes with a straight stitch plate. So if you're a, again, a keen quilter or, or even a dressmaker and you want that the, the most precise stitching you can, you can pop a straight stitch plate on and that gives you some really, really precise st stitching. Um, a load of other extra tools and the bits and pieces that you'd expect in any machine. Loads of spare bobbins. I think it comes with a pack of, uh, oh, I think it's 10 bobbins come standard with the machine. And um, great instruction book too. And I, I should mention that because some, some appliances these days don't even come with an instruction book. So this comes with the um, accessories guide. So that's Brother have a lot of accessories, I've got to tell you. So, um, and one of the best things about, about another best thing about Brother Machines is the price of the presser feet. They're so affordable by comparison. So um, just check them out. But that guide gives you all the different accessories that are available. I love quick reference guides. So this is a quick way to get started on the machine. If you're not keen to, to sit down and read the whole instruction book, there's your, your starting point. Um, these little template sheets, because on this machine, you can design your own stitches. In fact, even though it has 729, I think, built in um, beautiful stitches, you can design your own. You could have infinite stitches directly by designing on the screen here, which we'll show you a little later. But a really good owner's manual. It's beautifully written and um, everything you need to know about the machine is in there. So really well kitted with uh, all the information you need there. It does come with a foot control, obviously, and this machine can also be adapted or you can get the, um, the dual purpose uh, the, or the dual foot control, which is an option, but you can get it for this machine so you can have multiple controls by using your feet. Um, that is available and it does also come with a CD with I think another 30 stitches on there that can be loaded to the machine. So not only do you have what's built in, you've got an extra um, range of stitches on there and also you've got the ability to create your own. So that's kind of cool. So that's basically what's in the machine. It doesn't have a hard cover. Um, you could imagine a hard cover for this would be huge. Where would you put it? That's the problem with a hard cover, but it does come with a soft dust cover. And I recommend putting that on when the machine's not in use just to keep dust off the machine. That's always a good thing. So um, really, really well kitted out with all the accessories. So let's now get into uh, winding and bobbin and showing you some of the uh, stitching features. Okay, so first thing we're going to do uh, before we do any stitching is have a look at this amazing seven inch color touch screen. So it is in screensaver mode at the moment and if I just touch anywhere on the screen, the machine will go into its standing, standard stitching menu. Now again, um, it's just like the buttons on the machine. The buttons on the screen are equally as big and easy to identify. And if you've had a Brother product before, 
um, you'll know that their user interface is the simplest, easiest and most intuitive on the market without question and that's the same on this machine. Um, you really don't have to learn the machine every time you go to use it and that's a big advantage. You just want to be able to go in and sew. Now I'm going to say this too, it's a colour touch screen, it's a computerised product and a lot of people say to me, oh you know I think computers, are what all those things can go wrong. Please, as a mechanic, 40 years in the industry, computer technology now is the most reliable technology on the market. Uh, these machines have a five-year computer warranty on them. And you know what? You can hit whatever buttons you want. You can't hurt anything. If you do something you're not sure of, you can just switch the machine off if you like and turn it back on. It will reset itself. In this case, I, I don't know what I just pushed. I just hit some buttons. It doesn't matter. If I want to go and do a straight stitch, you'll see I've got my most used stitches, which comes up as the default screen. And if I just want a straight stitch, center position, I hit the button, it's all set for me. I don't have to change anything, it's all ready to go. But the big thing is it's easy to adjust. So remember, even though it's computerized, you are in control. So all the stitches on here can be controlled if you want to change the width or the length or mirror image them or uh, merge stitches together and create your own patterns, you can. And all those features and buttons are down here. You've got width, length, a needle position and you've got your tension adjustment down here. It has got a really good auto tension system on it, uh, but again, tension is variable as, as are threads and fabrics and the things you're sewing on, so you do have a control here that you can override. And one thing I do want to point out, again, it's just the simplicity of Brother Machines. Whenever you're looking at any setting, all these settings here have a black box behind them. And that means that's the standard factory setting. That's the default setting, if you like. And if you change something, that black box will disappear. And that means that you're not on the standard factory setting. If you just want to get back to normal, just reset it to the black box and you're back to a starting point. It's that simple. So you can't get too far out of, out of shape there. Uh, the other um, nice things about this uh, particular screen, not only is it nice and bright and colourful, you can adjust the, um, the brightness of the screen, so depending on your room conditions. And um, it also shows you, when you select a stitch, it shows you the actual stitch you're going to be stitching right here in, um, in uh, actual size. And uh, that's telling me it's 100%. That's what it would look like on your fabric. If you, this particular menu, for instance, has three pages, so we can scroll down from page to page. It tells you I'm now on page two of three, so it's all very easy to follow. And then you've got more menus here, so you can scroll down. If I wanted that stitch, I would just select it. It shows it there. It tells me I need to use the end foot, so I would change over to the end foot, and all the feet have got the letters on them, so you can't go wrong there. And um, it's really, really that simple. You've got amazing buttonholes on this. I think it has 14 different buttonhole styles. So just choose the buttonhole menu and there they all are for you. And in that menu, you've also got auto button sewing, an auto darning stitch and an eyelet stitch as well, which is kind of cool. Uniquely, this machine also has sideways sewing. In other words, it can sew in multiple directions. So not only forward and backwards, but it can sew left, right and down on diagonals. Uh, really cool feature. We'll do a little bit of that in a moment. And there's a raft of built-in purpose-built quilting stitches. In fact, there's three pages of them. And um, as I said, there's 729 stitches built into the machine. So sensational range. You won't run out of things to do, but you've got all the most used quilting stitches that are already automatically set there. So you don't have to be setting things. It will do it all for you. That's just in the utility stitch menu. Then you go into the character decorative stitches and you've got another whole world of opportunities here. You've got huge big maxi stitches and this, this has 33 pages of these really amazing decorative stitches. When you select one, it shows you the stitch there. I can program different stitches together. I'm not going to do that now because I want to try and keep this as brief as I can for you, but you can program stitches together choosing up uh, any stitches out of this massive range of stitches that are built into the machine. And it's all very visual and that's the thing I like the most. Everything is so visual. So if you want that stitch, just select it. So right now I'm putting a combination of stitches together and then I could save them if I wished or just go ahead and stitch them. And um, if we go back, we'll close that screen down. We've got uh, another range of decorative stitches, another set of 12 decorative stitches. These are a wee bit smaller. 
and uh, let's close that screen down and then some more maxi stitches like satin stitches and scallops and all sorts of really cool embellishment stitches that you can just really get creative with and close that down um, traditional scallops etc and the, 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 the things you might use in applique and so on all adjustable mind you there's a whole heap of cross stitches uh, there's some built-in fonts and letters I think there's five built-in fonts so they're the smaller kind of um, uh, seven mil fonts, but I think there might be a couple of larger ones in there as well that go outside that uh, seven mil because this machine can stitch sideways. So that's the benefit with that option. You can not only, you're not only restricted to your, your seven mil zigzag width. And if we close that down, close that down. Um, one of my favorite things is it has the ability to program your own stitches. So in this screen here, I could create any stitch I want. If I had an idea for my own little sort of sashiko type stitch or some French knots, I can actually sit in and just wherever I push this little, I think camera guy's gonna have to zoom in here, but wherever that little pen is, if I hit set, I get a stitch. If I move down now and hit set again, I'll get a stitch. And then if I come back on an angle and hit set, that's where it'll stitch. And then I can come back here and set, and then I'll go up here and set and then I'll come back here and set. And if I want to test that stitch, I've just created that unique little, kind of like a, um, a chevron type, type of design. And uh, that's quite unique. It's, um, it's not a built-in stitch, but I've just created it. And I can create any number of stitches I like. If I wanted to save that, I would just hit the memory button and it will save it into the memory of the machine. And that's that button there where you keep all your different stitches. I've already saved a couple. I've been playing around this with this just before I, I've started this video. So I've saved a, a few stitches in there already. Uh, close that down, and then you've got your normal memory and USB connect connectivity. So any updates or things that come out for this machine, you've got a USB on the side, so you can either direct connect to a computer, or you can indeed just load your update file to a USB stick, plug it in, really simple to update the machine. Um, so that's your basic menu functions there. And if we just go back to our standard screen, let's actually do some sewing. Okay, so we're gonna do some sewing now on this amazing machine. And the first thing we need to do is wind a bobbin. Now, I'm going to be using a spool of Rosant thread and uh, it's one of my favorite threads. As always, regardless of what machine, what brand it is, always use good quality thread, guys, because honestly, uh, threads ain't threads. You know, if you're a uh, junky thread, will give you junky results, cause uh, all sorts of issues and, uh, it's not worth it. So good quality thread. Rosant's one of my favorites. I'm using the standard 1000 meter and I will use one of the little thread caps or holders that sits on the end of the spool and it, it stops that from sort of getting caught and makes the spool travel nice and well. So we're just going to pop that on here like so and I'm just going to pop this guy in there and that'll just keep that, that spool nice and firm and it'll keep it spinning nice and, and uh, or keep the thread from getting caught. Now, I want to wind a bobbin, so I'm going to take my A-style bobbin. Now, these are the larger bobbins. You might recall, you know, um, 15, 20 years ago, the uh, the brother bobbins were a little bit smaller, um, but the A-style is now indus almost industry standard, really. And we're going to pop that bobbin up on the actual bobbin spindle right there. Now, the threading is really simple. There's a, a numbered diagram here. So step one is here under this little guide here. If we're going to wind a bobbin, we follow the, the dotted line with the arrow on it. So it comes back over there and it shows me just here. So we're going to come up and into this little guy at number two. It's marked at number two. And then we're going to come around this little spindle right here. And then we're going to come across to the bobbin, wind it around the bobbin a few times. Now I love this, there's a little cutter just here. We just simply pull that in there to cut it off, and now we're ready to wind a bobbin. All that's left to do is to engage. I'll come up with my hand here, the bobbin winder. The bobbin winder uh, screen now comes into play. Now here's a little tip. I generally recommend winding your bobbin at half speed because when you wind it at high speed, you're putting a little bit more stress on the thread and you can actually stretch the thread a bit during the, the winding process. And um, when that all contracts, it can actually cause a little bit of grief in, in uh, the way the, the the bobbin tension and the bobbin will actually unravel. So all I've got to do now is hit the start button. Now it will stop when it's wound, but if you are just needing a little bit of one color, just stop it yourself when you're ready. You don't need to always fill a bobbin 
um, just because it has an auto stop. Um, I'm going to go about halfway on this. I don't need to fill this one. But that's all there is to winding the bob. And it has its own little independent motor to wind it, so it doesn't rely on the machine's main motor to wind the bobbin. And um, that means you can wind the bobbin while the machine is not running. And we'll just stop that there. That will do me. So to take that off, all I've got to do is disengage there. Remember, if I had to let it wind all the way, it would have disengaged by itself. And then lift the bobbin up. And then just, I'm just going to cut that off there. And there, my bobbin is ready to load in the machine. And all I've got to do now to want to load the bobbin is um, first we'll just lift the presser foot. So nice, easy presser foot lift button right on the front here. You'll notice here we've got a clear plastic plate right here that covers the bobbin area and it sits in the grey slide plate just there. In order to take that plate off, we just lift, push that little lug there and slide that off and the bobbin sits in. And there's a little, a little symbol on the front here telling you how the bobbin should unwind. So the bobbin will actually spin anti-clockwise when you're running. Now, this is the great part of this uh, quick set bobbin system. All we've got to do is direct the bobbin thread into that little slot there, pull it around, and then just cut it right here. We do not need to draw the bobbin thread, and that's magnificent because um, it's a pain in the backside, to be honest, drawing the bobbin thread up through the needle plate, as we used to do in the old days. You can all remember that. Because if you didn't, you'd end up jamming up your thread and, and getting a sort of a bad result. So you don't need to do that on these machines. In fact, you don't need to do that on pretty much any brother machine these days. So to put the clear plastic plate on, I'm going to try and keep my hands out the way. You just simply hook it in under this little spring here. And then once it's there, just pop it down and that's it. Your plate is in position. The bobbin is threaded. We're ready to go. We need, now need to thread the machine. And uh, this is just a, a work of art the needle threading on the brother machine. So I'm just going to take that bobbin thread out of the bobbin winder. We don't need that there anymore. And at this point, I'm now going to follow the solid line. So we start at position one, which is under here. We just simply come around, follow it. Now remember, you always thread your machine with the presser foot up. And in fact, on most of these high-end brother machines, if the presser foot is down, it won't let you thread the machine anyway. So my presser foot is up, everything's good to go. Number three is down here, up into number four. Now number four is the take-up lever. Every machine has a take-up lever. You've got to make sure the thread is in there and it's kind of self-guides itself anyway, but always just pay particular attention that you have threaded number four correctly. Down through number five, which is the slot down here, into number six on the needle bar. That's very important. You've got to get it into number six. And once you're in number six, there is number seven. And we just come up, go into number seven, and then cut it off. There's a little cutter on the side of the machine. Um, camera guy probably can't see that, but you'll see it. It's there, easy to find. Now, once you've done that, all that's left to do is touch the needle threader button. And the machine will thread, and you're good to go. How easy is that? Got to love that needle threader. The only tip I give you is, and, and brother will give you this tip as well, if you are using specialty needles like wing needles or getting down to size 65, 60 needles, then we'd recommend not using the needle threader because it's not designed for that type of needle. But 99% of what you're going to do will be using a more traditional size needle, be it a universal, a quilting, a denim, a jeans, or, or a stretch, they'll all work fine with the needle threader. So, so that's it, machine is threaded. And um, all right, so we've threaded the machine. Um, and all I'm gonna do is stitch on a bit of uh, plain white fabric at the moment so you can actually get a sense of, of how this all works. Um, you'll notice I've got the machine threaded and I'm going to leave the thread sitting on top. Now, a lot of people will look at this, particularly if you're an old school sewer and go, oh my goodness, look what he's doing. You shouldn't do that. These machines are virtually jam proof. If you thread them correctly, they're not going to jam. So it's not going to matter if that thread is sitting on top of the foot or under the foot. If you don't want the tail of the thread to be stitched in under the foot, then by all means, put it under the foot and then, then it won't. Um, but just for the sake of this little demonstration, I'm going to leave it out on top. Okay, so I'm now going to put the foot down using the button here and our foot is down. We are currently in the, the number one stitch, which is the needle in the left position. Um, I, like to, I like to stitch with my needle center, so I'm going to go to stitch number three. 
And you can use your finger as well as the stylus. You're not going to hurt the machine by using your finger. What we don't recommend is using a really sharp object, of course, but you, the pad of your finger is fine, as is the stylus. Um, I don't have the foot control plugged in. I'm only using the start stop button and I'm going to use my speed regulator here to regulate that speed. And incidentally, if your foot pedal is plugged in and you want to slow the machine down to a really slow speed, this will um, limit the speed of the machine. So really good if you're doing something quite tricky and delicate. Excellent for learners who are, are, are you know, just not sure of how to control that, that speed on the foot control. But uh, nonetheless, great feature. All right, so we're ready to go. If I hit this button, it will just start sewing a straight stitch at a relatively slow speed. But as I move that up, it will speed up. Now, the first thing you'll notice is they're very quiet. They're a whisper quiet machine. To stop, just hit that button. Needle, I've got it set so as that the needle stops down and the foot lifts automatically. So that's called the auto pivot function. And again, if you're a quilter, you will love that feature. And you can adjust the height of that foot so when it pivots. If I turn my fabric around to come down in this direction, all I've got to do is hit the start button, the foot will come down and it will start stitching again. And when I get to my pivot point, just hit that button again, turn around, hit the button again, and it will then continue on. And it'll go a lot faster than that. I, I don't need to right now, but we'll just get to that point there. Pivot down, turn around, come back, and we'll just stop there. Now, at this point, I could do a little reverse if I wish. Hold my finger on reverse, and it will keep reversing to back tack as much as you like. And I could come forward again, a few stitches, stop there, hit the scissor button, and it will cut the thread for you. So it has trimmers. You'd never need to reach for a pair of scissors again. Cuts the thread to a perfect tail length and um, really, really simple. Now, one of the most used features on this machine. Let's just put that foot down again for a minute. On the screen, I've got the ability to turn my auto pivot on and off here, but I can also set my auto reverse, auto scissors. So this, this means that now when I finish sewing, if I start, it's going to do reverse stitching, so back tacking at the start of the seam. When I get to the end of the seam, just hit the reverse button, it will now back tack, tie off the stitches, trim the thread, and stop with the needle up. So there's my, so there's my auto back tacking, and it was really, really simple. I get to the end, I just hit the button, and it back tacks and trims the thread for me. So let's change to a different stitch now, and um, all I've got to do, I'm just going to stitch down between there, is again, I, I don't need to put the foot down because it will go down automatically when I start sewing, but let's just go to a zigzag stitch. And remember, I can see it here, it's telling me I should be using the J foot. So all I've got to do now is hit the green button and it will start sewing a zigzag stitch. Now I can change that width, let's just stop that. I've got full width controls here. If I want it to be a seven, a right up to seven mil, I just keep hitting that button and start stitching and now it will Go out to a wide zigzag. And you can change the stitch length too. So if I wanted it a bit longer, I've changed it to 2.5. And it changes on the screen for you. So not only is it going to sew like that, but it's going to show you the changes you've made right here. So that's really handy just to make sure and affirm that you've actually, or reaffirm that you've made the, the change. So foot down and you'll see that's going to be a longer stitch now. And we'll stop just there. We'll do a trim. Take that out, and um, there we go. So nice, nice and simple, uh, beautiful quality stitching as you'd expect. Now I'm going to have a look at um, a couple of the decorative stitches and show you how it actually sews sideways, and then we'll actually look at the sideways movement as well. All right, so let's just, uh, I'm gonna put that foot down for a minute, hold the fabric there in place. And right now I'm going to go into the decorative character stitch option, and we're just gonna pick up Oh, I don't know, any old stitch. I mean, I could spend whole day showing you things on this machine. We don't have that much time. Uh, let's have a look at this one. It kind of looks kind of, you know, I, I like it. It looks cool. Now, it's telling me to use the end foot. So really simple process to change feet. The end foot is in the little case here. I'm just going to find it. it has N written on there. So I've got the end foot, and you'll see there's a little tiny N on there. So all the feet are uh, sort of uh, marked with the appropriate um, character. And we're going to now take that out. Oops, and I just pulled my thread out of the needle. I don't know how I did that, but it's okay. We can fix that up. Remember, it has auto needle threading, so <clears throat> really quite simple. So all I've got to do is take the, uh, the little button at the back. I push that, drop the, uh, the J foot off, 
hold the end foot there, lower the foot, and it's now clipped into position. Remember to thread the machine, I just take it to number seven, cut it off there, and hit the needle threader button and we're good to go. <clears throat> now let's just position this, we'll stitch that right down the center there. And um, at this point, all I've got to do, it's all set, is just hit the go button. Now, if you watch carefully, you'll see the fabric moving side to side because this is a bigger stitch than seven millimeters, which is the zigzag width. And um, all we need to do is keep the um, keep it straight. So the machine is actually doing that little sideways motion, and it's giving us a lovely wide stitch. And all we got to do is guide the fabric, and uh, the stitching looks absolutely beautiful. Now, if I hit this little fixed stitch button or this uh, little round circle here, it will now stop at the end of an actual pattern. So it won't, I'm not stopping in the middle of a pattern. I've still got auto pivot switched on, um, but I want to actually just do a trim right now. So hit the trim button and take that forward. And there we've got a beautiful little decorative stitch. And there's hundreds and hundreds in this machine. Okay, so I'm going to show you the sideways stitching motion. So you can actually stitch straight stitch or zigzag in, a, in a, any direction you like, really. So I'm going to stitch across this box here. And to do that, I go into my sideways stitching motion just here, and I'm going to stitch from left to right. So I click that button there. It tells me I need the end foot. That happens to be the foot I just used for that decorative stitch, so I'm happy with that. And all I've got to do now is hit the go button. And the machine is stitching sideways. Now, that's kind of handy because sometimes, and I'm gonna stop it just when we get to the end of that uh, box, Sometimes you've got a big object in, or you might have a quilt, or a big garment or something, and you need to tack about an inch one in one direction. You've got to turn that whole thing around to stitch just an inch of stitching and then turn it back around. So with the sideways motion, you just choose the direction you want to sew on and away you go. I can even sew in a, in a diagonal. So if I wanted to now stitch deck back down to this point just here, I've chosen the uh, this option here, the one that goes that way. <laughs> And we just hit the button and now it's going to sew on a 45 degree angle. And I, I think that's so cool, so cool. When we get to the end, and now I could come back again that way. And without moving my fabric at all. And when we get to the end there, we'll just do a trim, let's see what we got. So we've created a Z without moving the fabric. So you can imagine the applications for that. And you can even sew a zigzag in, uh, in, in a sideways motion. So sideways stitching is, uh, you're gonna find a lot of brother machines, even down to, um, gee, it was uh, in the mid-range machines will have that feature as well, which is really cool. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the laser vision system on the BQ3100. Now, this is a sensational piece of technology that has been around with Brother for quite some time and, in fact, was a key part of the, uh, the VQ3000, the previous model, and is a standard feature on most of the top-of-the-range machines in the Brother range presently. And what it does is it actually allows you to project a laser guide system in front of the foot. So let's turn the laser button on, and here it is here. Now, before I do, I'm in the standard uh, default straight stitch position, which is the left-hand needle position. Turn the laser on, and now you see you can only, can't really see much happening there, but if you look on my piece of fabric, there is a laser guideline now projected forward on the fabric. And what that allows you to do is use that guideline as a, as a guide for setting seam allowances. If you're a patch worker using that to set a, you know, a six mil seam or a quarter inch seam, um, you can use it for stitching in the ditch. You can use it for just alignment in any, any sort of conceivable manner you can imagine. Now, when you turn the laser on, remember what I said before, every time you set, turn something on, if there's a black box behind a setting, that's the standard, the standard default setting. So the laser is currently on zero. My needle is in the left position, but if I wanted my laser to be, let's just say 3.5 millimeters from my stitching line. So I'm using that laser guide now as a guideline on that line of stitching that I've already got there. And we'll just slow it down a bit so you can see what's gonna happen. But if I start stitching now, my laser is exactly 3.5 millimeters from my needle point and I don't need to watch my needle. I'm watching the laser. I'm making sure that I'm keeping the laser on that line of stitches. I'm doing it slow so you can see what's actually happening. 
But as long as my laser is lined up with the line of stitches that's my reference point, I've got a perfect 3.5 mil stitch there. So let's just stop that there, do a trim and see what we've got. And so that is now the perfect 3.5 mil gap between those two lines of stitches. So there's a lot more to it and there's good videos showing digging deep into the laser system all over YouTube. But I can honestly tell you, once you start using that, it just makes alignment in all sorts of um, situations so, so much easier. So exclusive brother product, well done brother. And um, you, if you're a quilter particularly, you, you will love that feature. So next thing I want to show you while we're still sort of in the standard mode is we'll just quickly have a look at the buttonhole menus. I'm gonna turn that laser guide off right there now. And to get into buttonholes, all you've got to do is hit the buttonhole button and uh, you've got 14 different buttonholes to choose from. And of course, it's a one-step auto buttonhole as you'd expect. You've got your standard buttonhole foot right here. Uh, I'm sure you've probably, you've all seen this type of foot. Button goes in the back, machine measures it for you, does a perfect buttonhole every time. And uh, I, I don't really need to show you that right now because it just works and, and you know, one step buttonhole on the Brother Machines is just awesome. But you've got 14 different buttonhole options there. And I think I mentioned earlier, also button sewing. It's a really great button sewing machine and eyelets and darning stitches and uh, mending stitches and all sorts of fantastic things there. So buttonhole, one step buttonhole is there and included. Very, very easy to do. I'll pop that back in there the right way. Again, back into quilting mode, almost forgot this. If you want to do free motion quilting, super, super easy. All you do is hit that button and that will actually apply it. Of course, I should go back into my straight stitch first so we could um, choose a straight stitch, hit the free motion quilting button. Now what that does is it automatically drops the feeders and all we would do is change our foot. It's suggesting we should use the O foot. So we would um, grab the O foot, which is that one. This is the open toe uh, free motion foot, and we would pop that on the machine. Now this is this one actually screws on and off, but the point I'm making here with your free motion uh, foot is that you don't have to set anything on the machine. You just hit the one button and it's all set for you. Super, super easy, and uh, you will love that. You, it's nice when you don't have to think about things too hard, and that's the beauty of a, of a touch screen and a, a, such an intuitive one like this. It just does it all for you, but you are still in control. If you want to change anything, you can, and that's really important. Now, talking of quilting, and the, one of the big features on this machine is the Move It um, dual, dual feed foot. Now, this has been around for a while. Uh, the VQ3000 has this, as does the, uh, the VQ2400, uh, the Dream Machines, the uh, Stellaires, the, the um, Luminaires but it is standard also on the BQ3100 and I think the, um, the BQ2500, which is the model below this, also has it. It's slightly improved on previous models. It's a bit shallower here, so um, it just adds a little bit easier for some of the really bulky quilts that you might do. But the way it works is you've got a tractor-fed system on the bottom or a little sort of, that little sort of rubber wheel and it's driven by its own motor that is in this foot. Now I'm going to quickly pop this on and we'll show you how it works. We'll just put this standard um, presser foot back on. Just clips on. I will need my screwdriver. Let me change it over. We'll be back in a tick. Okay, so we've put the, uh, the presser foot on. There is a plug in the back that we've popped in. It is in position. I'm going to get out of my free motion mode there and I'm just gonna stick with my center needle position. Now I've got a bit of a, um, a quilt sandwich sort of set up here. So we've got a couple of pieces of nice, uh, uh, I guess it's a, a, a quilter's um, muslin and um, a bit of batting in the middle there. And the beauty of this foot is, is the fact that it actually is controlled electronically. And so that little, um, the belt that drives it, if you can imagine a walking foot, for those of you who had a machine like that, it actually is a more precise feeding mechanism and it's controlled electronically. And um, that's a really cool feature. So now I'm gonna just make sure it's engaged, which it is. I'm gonna pop our foot down. And what that means now is, just make sure I'm plugged in at the back, which I am. That little wheel is now feeding the top of the fabric as well as the feeders feeding the bottom of the fabric. And because you can control the amount of pull on the top wheel, you have complete control over the way your fabric is actually feeding. And it's very precise. And we'll speed that up a bit. 
and it will give you perfect feeding of any quilt sandwich that you're going to do. Now, obviously, I, I'm not a quilter, to be honest, so um, I, um, I don't have a nice big quilt here to show you, but I can tell you now there's lots of great reviews and videos online um, on this particular Move It foot. And um, it just means that you're not going to get that puckered uh, and, and horrible effect that you'd often get when you've got the, the top fabric not feeding as smoothly as the bottom layers. So really simple. It's also good for climbing up over heavy objects. So if you're mending uh, denim or um, you've got heavy seams that you need to climb over, that top feeding, that top uh, belt drive will actually pull your fabric through nicely, just like a hot knife through butter. And um, whoops, let's just pivot that around again. Uh, not much to see, but you can see, you can't hear any noise. You know, normally when you have a walking foot, they're really clackety and clunky. These are just whisper quiet, but they give you a much more precise feed mechanism. We'll do, um, at some point, we'll do some really intense videos on just how beneficial that um, that foot is. It's, uh, it, it's a whole video in itself, actually. It's so cool. But it is included and is standard on the machine. So uh, it, with the machine, you don't have to buy that as an optional extra. So let's just trim that thread, take that out. Now, the BQ3100 comes with um, three, I think it's three, extra sole feet for the actual Move It foot. So I'll just pop these up here. So you've got a quarter inch foot with guide. You've got a stitch in the ditch foot and you've got a, um, a clear view foot. And there's actually a cording hole in the front of that as well. So that's standard with this machine, which is uh, you know at least another hundred dollars worth of feet that comes to suit the Move It foot. So when you, when you add everything up with all the features on this machine, the amazing number of stitches, 729 stitches. But remember, you can create any number of stitches you like. You can make your own on the machine. It's, so it's an infinite range of stitches. All the automation, the laser guidance system, the, uh, the Move It Foot, as I said, uh, the beautiful big wide table, the space, the, 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 just the simplicity of using this machine and the, the quality of the stitching. Uh, the quality of the engineering. They're not a light machine, you know, they're, 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 they're not overly heavy, but they don't bounce around the table, I can tell you. Um, so they're just a dream to sew on. They really are loads of great features, um, loaded to the hilt with all the accessories that you're going to need. And honestly, I could talk all day on the different functionalities on this machine, but we've covered, we've covered the main ones. And um, you know, I'd encourage you to have a look at the videos on our website if you're interested in your next machine. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, fire them uh, at us. Uh, check out the deals we have at any given time on our website. There's always something great going on. And you just can't go wrong with this model. And again, probably the biggest single advantage on it is it's just so intuitive to use. You know, you really don't have to think too hard about setting any, anything on the machine, selecting stitches. It's just a pleasure to sit at. So I uh, hope that gives you a bit of an overview on this uh, BQ3100. You can buy it with confidence and you're gonna be a really, really happy, happy sewer, I can assure you. So that's it for now, cheers.